Hi and welcome to Helen's House and Garden. I'm Helen and in this video I'm going to show you how to make traditional Cornish pasties. Firstly I'm going to make the pastry for the Cornish pasties because we need to leave it to rest in the fridge for a while. So if you make that first it gives a sample time. I've weighed out 500 grams of flour into the bowl of my food mixer. Now you can make this pastry by hand, but it's a lot quicker to do it with a food mixer. But I will show you in a video later how to actually make any pastry by hand. I've prepared some lard, which I've cut up into small cubes. So that's 120 grams of lard. We'll just pop that into the bowl of the food mixer. And just give it a stir at this stage. Why we cut it into cubes is because it helps to make the pa pastry come together a lot more easier without clumps of fats in there. The other fat we need is 125 grams of salted butter and again I've cut the butter into small cubes. We'll just pop those into the bowl and when I've done that I will also give that a little stir just to incorporate the flour into the fats. So you can see that the lumps of fats are covered in the flour. A teaspoon of salt. And then I've weighed out 175 ml of cold water. We're going to add this slowly and we might not need all of it. Generally I find this recipe does exactly take 175 grams, but different flour absorbs slightly differently, so we'll see as we go along. I'm going to use a K-beater. This type of mixer, K-beater, is the best beater to use for making a pastry. So I'm going to turn it on and the fats are going to be incorporated into the flour. And I'll show you what that looks like when it's ready. So after two minutes on a fairly low speed on the food mixer, we've got a bread crummy consistency and all the fats have been blended into the flour. That's what we're after. Once you've got that dry bread crumb consistency, you're going to be ready to pop the water in. I'm just going to add the water a little bit at a time and pop the food mixer on on a slow speed because otherwise all the crumbs will come flying out of the food mixer and I'll make a terrible mess. The last bit of mixing the dough I'm going to do by hand because it will just be too much for the motor on the food mixer. And I haven't added all the water because it was going to make the dough too wet. So you want a reasonably dry-ish dough. It's one of those things where once you've made the pastry before, uh, it just takes practice and you're just going to have to trust your judgment. If it's really super wet and sticky on the hand, all you want to do is just add a little bit more flour. But try not to get in that situation in the first place by adding the water just a little bit at a time. So let's have a look and see how the dough has formed. Just going to shake a little bit of flour onto my work surface just so that the dough doesn't completely stick. And 
I have actually mixed it a little bit too wet, but it's not, not too bad. Just shake some flour over the top. This is where you're all mucky. So I've just added some a little bit of flour to the board because the dough is just a slightly tad bit wet, but nothing to worry about. I'm just going to give it a quick knead, make sure everything is combined. It feels good. Once we've just kneaded through, it doesn't need a knead like bread, it just needs to be formed together. And then I'll just wrap it up and pop it in the fridge. Some people say that you need to leave it three hours in the fridge. Sometimes I haven't had time to, to leave it for three hours, so I've just left it for as long as it's taken me to chop up and prepare all the ingredients which we're going to pop into the pasty, which takes about 30 minutes, and that's fine. There we go, it's all come together nicely, got a nice smooth pastry, that's what we're looking for. I've just formed the dough into a ball and I'm going to pop that into a freezer bag and leave that to rest and then it will be ready once I've chopped up all the ingredients and prepared everything to make the pasties. This recipe makes six Cornish pasties and I'm going to prepare the trays that we're going to bake them on. So we need two good sized trays, we're going to put three pasties on each and what I do is I get some grease proof paper and simply pop a sheet in the bottom of the tray on both trays and then pop the pasty on top of the baking paper and that way it saves a lot of mess and a lot of cleanup. So it's quite simple to do. It's not like baking a cake where you need to be a little bit more precise with your lining paper. And just pop paper into the tray. And then all I do is just run my fingers along the line if it's not quite the exact size and put a crease in the paper and that should be good enough to go. The other thing you can use is silicon mats, I don't have any uh, but they are very good and you can use them for baking anything on cakes or, or pasties or pies. For the filling for traditional Cornish pasties, you only need four ingredients. Beef, swede, onions and potato. And that's it, with some salt and pepper seasoning. Other ingredients that people put in are just not traditional. You can if you want, but we're making traditional Cornish pasties today. The beef skirt, 500 grams. Beef skirt is the best cut for making a Cornish pasty. Just cut it into small chunks and if you cut on the cross grain, it actually makes the meat easier to eat. It's more tender that way. If you help yourself to a big bowl to mix all the ingredients, you'll make life really easy for yourself because once all the ingredients are in the bowl, it is quite full. So you don't want to be working in a tight space and ingredients flying everywhere. So we'll pop the beef in. grams of potatoes. Important to get waxy potatoes. These are Aaron Pilot potatoes which are homegrown in the garden. Check my video on how to grow potatoes and I've just scrubbed them and cut them into small cubes. I've left the skin on. A lot of the nutrients lie just underneath the skin in most vegetables and potatoes included. So small chop on those straight into the mixing bowl. Again, swede, cut into small chunks. You want everything of a similar chunk size, about half a centimetre is quite a good size. Then everything cooks all at the same speed and you have a lovely moist and flavourful pasty. 150 grams of white onion, 
again chopped pop them all in and then seasoning seasoning to taste I've got a good teaspoon of salt in here I eat very little processed food and because of that I don't have to worry too much about having salt in my diet because where else am I going to get it if you have concerns about salt maybe you have high blood pressure maybe you eat lots of processed food then you may need to just cut back a little on salt if you do cooking from scratch give that a mix and then pepper I use white um, ground pepper I think that's the best pepper that you can pop into a Cornish pasty and this is to taste some people like them quite spicy if you do pop some extra pepper in and the same if you're not so keen on it but do try little pepper because it really is um, an ingredient which brings out all the flavors as you can see I put quite a bit in that's kind of where I like it I have to be a little bit careful because pepper will make you sneeze give that a really good stir and then leave that to rest whilst you roll out your pastry and in that time the seasoning will have had a chance to incorporate into all the meat and vegetables in there looks good to me I've just taken the pastry out of the fridge and now's a good time if you're cooking the pasty soon to pop your oven on you want 200 degrees Celsius and I'm just going to pop a little bit of flour onto the board so it doesn't stick to the board and so we've got six pasties I'm just going to I in chopping up the dough, cut it in half and then cut into three and it'll be roughly right. You can be very precise and weigh everything into a sixth. I'm going to put the extra dough aside and it's best to roll the dough into a ball because we want to make a round shape. Now you can roll it out, you can use a plate and cut round the dough. I'm just going to do this freehand. A little bit more flour onto the board. I've got a cross and then quarter turn, quarter turn, and just press the rolling pin into the dough ball to start off, and it just helps you roll a more symmetrical shape. Some people are excellent at rolling out circles. And then just gently roll, quarter turn, even pressure on either side of the rolling pin, quarter turn. If you find that the rolling pin is sticking to the dough, you can just put a little bit of extra flour onto that pastry and that will be fine, that will help stop any stickiness. And just keep doing a quarter turn, gentle pressure, and roll out and try and keep in mind a round shape. Mine's not exactly round, I'm not too bothered. If I was doing this for um, you know, a competition or something like that, I would roll out the dough and use some form of plate or cutter to make sure that the pastry was absolutely round. And to be fair, the rounder your pastry is, the easier it is actually to fold and put the filling in and, and put the crimp on. So try and keep it as good as you can. 
on a round shape. You want the thickness about half a centimetre throughout, so it's important to try and roll evenly. Almost there. So not the most perfect round shape, you can just even it up a little bit by hand. Roll it this way. And that's good enough. Tap it around, just get the shape a little bit more round and we're good to go. I'm ready to put the filling into the pastry. I've grabbed some water and a pastry brush and we're going to use this to paint water around the edge of half of the pastry here and when we fold it that will allow the pastry to stick to each other and we can put the crimp in. So we'll grab our ingredients give it one last stir before popping it in and again you can weigh this out into six I tend to do it by eye sometimes you get larger pasties than others but if you uh, think it's really important to have an equal filling the way to go is to divide this up into a six again I'm going to grab a big spoonful I'm going to pop that into the very middle of the pastry. And this is a bit trial and error the first few times you make it because you don't want to overfill and you don't want to underfill. If you overfill, you're not gonna be able to fold the pasty and you can also tear the dough. And if you tear the dough and cook it, all the goodness is going to leak out and you're going to end up with a dry pasty and a big mess on the baking tray. At this stage we just paste around about half of the outer edge of the pastry with water. And then this is the tricky bit. So we lift up pastry edges side to side and together and then try and put the edges to the edges all the way around I tend to do one half any ingredients tries to escape just poke it back in not too bad roll it onto its side and very gently with the outer edge of your hands press around so I'm just pressing against where the edge of the filling is and you can see that it's flat on this edge this is the edge that we're going to crimp so the way to crimp a pasty I'm not the world's best person at doing this but a little trick which makes it easier is the corner that you start on and you can start either end depending on which way round you like to work but the outer corner just fold that over first and that's the first part of the crimp and then you take two fingers and two fingers index and thumb is how I like to use and you press together and fold and fold over so I'm pressing and lifting with this finger and then pressing in. This is why it's important to have a gap on the edge because you need a working edge to do the crimp. It is an art form which I haven't perfected yet but as long as you seal it, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Then we come to the last corner and that simply just gets folded. 
You can go back and just press down a little bit. And that's good enough. So we're going to pop that onto the baking tray. Gently lift up because there's lots of filling. And then pop it onto your baking tray and then do the next one. To put the final touch on your Cornish pasties, I'm going to make an egg wash. Very simply, an egg. Then I'm going to save the shell and I've done a video that shows you what you can do with used egg shells and a little bit of milk. Now we're locked down still and we've run out of milk but we do have some powdered milk so don't worry if that's all we've got because that will work. I'm just going to pop a little bit of milk in there. I'll just do it by eye. Just give that a good whisk to incorporate the whole egg into the milk. We're going to glaze the Cornish pasty. And then using your pastry brush, just paint the mixture all over the pasty. Don't worry if it runs onto the baking paper, because that's what it's there to do, to catch any runoff. Just liberally coat each one. And I find it's best if you wash each pasty once and then go back and reglaze them and that just gives you a, a better coating and a better glaze once the pasties have cooked rather than trying to do it all in one go. You've got to be a little bit gentle, don't press too hard because you'll put the pastry brush straight through the pastry which is going to cause problems with baking if you have holes in the pastry. And the first time round it won't cover everything completely that's why I go round at least twice or three times whatever you feel you wish to do. Obviously if you have problems with eating eggs then you can just do milk glaze or you can leave them and not glaze them at all. I like to finish them off the, with the glaze because I think it makes them look better and I think it helps bake the whole pasty better as well. It's like a little seal that goes on. Back round for the second go. It's actually easier to see the second time round whether you've covered the pasty completely. We're going to pop them in the oven for about 45 minutes at 200 degrees. So set your timer for about 45 minutes, but it's not an exact science. What you will find is that you'll have a beautiful aroma in your kitchen of the pasties cooking and the pasties themselves will turn a beautiful golden brown colour. So if they're looking a little anemic, a little pale, you want to leave them in a little bit longer. So let's pop them in the oven. All finished, delicious pasties. Well, I hope they're delicious. I'm sure they will be. Let's have a, a cut in. See, nice golden brown. Straight down the middle. Fresh out the oven, it doesn't get much better than that. And there we go. Just perfect. And the Aaron Pilot potatoes work particularly well in this. Right, I'm off to go and enjoy these. If you like the video, please hit like, share, subscribe, and check out all the other videos that I've done. So take care, and I'll be seeing you. Mm -hmm.